Mi Wang and myself, Cheryl, go this Friday. Now, CSOs, or Chief Sustainability Officers, are the architects of sustainable transformation. However, they do need great partnerships with their boards and also their CEOs, their Chief Executive Officers. So we're going to find out about the importance of the role of a CSO and what they truly need to create change that the world needs, especially when it comes to the environment and sustainability. And our guest today on Work It is Atane Misra, uh, Head of um, Sustainability Asia Pacific at Egon Zender Singapore. Good to have you with us, Tane. Thank you, Hui. Thank you, Cheryl. Delighted to be here. Now, CSOs are described as the Architects of Sustainable Transformations. For listeners who are not too familiar, tell us more about the role of a CSO. Sure. So maybe let's start with defining sustainability first, because that's at the heart of what a CSO does. Uh, All businesses look to grow consistently, competitively, and profitably. And as businesses grow, Uh, They also need to grow responsibly. Uh, We should not take more from the environment than we give back to it. We should be aware of the ecosystems that we operate in. Sustainability is about growing responsibly within the ecosystem in which we operate. And this includes many aspects. People, supply chains, materials, packaging, customers, water, carbon, etc. The CSO, or Chief Sustainability Officer, is responsible for embedding the responsible growth strategy of an organization into the functions and processes, but more importantly, the people and the mindsets. Now, that's in theory. uh, In practice, multiple leaders in an organization own uh, own these agendas. So the CSO is really, for me, a leader that helps other leaders within the organization understand what sustainable growth is, how to achieve it, and why is it important. They help to drive purposeful performance in their organizations. Uh, that is how I would define it. Okay. Tani, I'm just curious, do CSOs also like, really get down to the nitty-gritty? Do they like look at the office and say, oh, we're using too much paper, um, you know, are we using too much plastic? Is, is this something that they would also you know, get their hands dirty with? Uh, a good CSO should get into <laughs> the nitty gritties. I mean, if it's material mm-hmm. and if it makes a positive impact, of course. I mean, it's a good question. Why are we using more paper than we need to? Why are the aircons on when people aren't in the offices? So it's about responsible growth. It's a great point. Yeah. Um, and, and it's also easy for you to actually keep track when you have this sustainability accounting standards uh, board framework, isn't it? And, you know, um, tell us why this is important to CSOs. Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. Uh, SASB, or the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, is really a framework of standards across industries. Uh, what that framework does is assess sustainability-linked opportunities and risks. So in very simple terms, it is a vocabulary that across industry simplifies what sustainable or responsible growth could look like. It covers five key domains, uh, environmental aspects, uh, social capital aspects, human capital aspects, uh, business model and innovation, and also leadership and governance. So it's very comprehensive and robust. What it does is it translates action. So for example, you talked about plastic usage in office. It helps translate our sustainable actions into financial metrics and performance. And it is important because the number one polarity that leaders and certainly CSOs face is, how do you balance short-term KPIs with long-term impact? Okay. Um, Tani, um, we know that CSOs should pursue sustainability goals. I mean, that that's the, the main crux of their job. Mm-hmm. But they do face very unique challenges in this day and age. And can you talk to us about what some of these challenges are? Yeah, um, uh, let, let me unpack some of the top challenges that our survey and our conversations with CSOs also revealed. Uh, the first one Uh, is what I just mentioned, which is balancing short-term performance KPIs with long-term impact. For example, let's talk about plastics. We all know that plastic packaging in a variety of industries and consumer goods uh, in retail is harmful for the environment. And therefore, phasing out plastics and not using it is good for us. 
for the planet and for the larger ecosystem. But there is a short-term uh, cost margin and uh, profitability impact, and that requires courage to balance the short-term impact with the longer-term uh, positive uh, role that, that choice plays. Uh, the second challenge is uh, pressures from shareholders and stakeholders. Means there are multiple stakeholders in an organization, uh, publicly listed organizations are responsible for reporting strong results uh, month on month, quarter on quarter. How do you manage pressures from shareholders and stakeholders while still doing what's right and good in the longer term? Uh, then there are emerging local and global tensions. Uh, Cheryl and we, you know, we are sitting in Singapore and we observe from the center of the world how the external environment is changing every day. You might have a well thought out plan, but then a conflict in some part of the world, a supply chain breakage in another part of the world, uh, a human uh, challenge, uh, a calamity in some other part of the world impacts our business. So these are some of the emerging and dynamic challenges CSOs face as they embark on the sustainable uh, growth mission for their organizations. Indeed, we're so interconnected in, in, mm -hmm. in every way. Um, you know, we also want to know, like, a C CSO usually reports to someone, usually the CEO. How does the quality of support from a CEO determine whether a CSO's job is successful or not? And in some instances, do you also see the CEO's role morphing into CSO's function as well? That's a great question. Uh, I mean, let me start by saying that the best CSO of an organization is the CEO. Uh, it starts with the leader. It's all about leadership. The CEO sets the tone for how the rest of the organization walks and marches. Uh, based on a survey, we've seen almost half the CSOs report into CEOs. The other half report into other functions who then report into CEOs, so that's indirect reporting. Now, uh, what is more important than reporting line is the support that CSOs receive from the CEOs. If the CEOs are behind the agenda, understand the agenda, and drive the agenda, sustainable transformation happens rapidly and across the organization. So what I would uh, encourage and emphasize is that the support of the CEO is a big driver into the success of the CSO and ultimately into the uh, sustainability journey that an organization embarks on. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the CEO does, like you said, has to set the, set the tone, uh, has yeah. to lead, really lead by example when it comes to sustainability. Um, Tane, due to the fact that sustainability transformation cannot happen overnight, this is really like a, a long-term uh, undertaking and has to be very consistent, it may take more investment upfront and a longer timeline until results are visible. Can you talk to us about the role of the board and the involvement uh, with the CEO on, on these matters, on this on yeah. this, this timeline, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you, you bring in a key aspect which are um, boards. So we've talked about CEOs so far in context of CSOs. Uh, the boards are equally critical. And, uh, you know, we asked the CSOs, what are the top factors that help you drive your sustainability journey uh, as you embark on them? And the top three factors were, number one, uh, the involvement and commitment of the C-suite, so the CEO and the executive team. Number two was how well the sustainability goals are aligned with financial performance and metrics. And number three was how uh, well the board manages sustainability governance and supervision. So the board is very important. It's critical. It comes up in the top three success factors. Uh, what our insights and conversations with leaders also revealed is that almost 70% CSOs have either direct board exposure or board integration via sustainability committees. Uh, now, 70% is encouraging, but uh, ideally I would say this should be 100%. Every board should be involved in driving sustainability. Every board meeting should have sustainability uh, as part of the agenda. Every board should be talking about what does responsible growth look like for our organization, for our business, and how do we facilitate, enable, encourage, and enhance that impact uh, as in, in our capacities as board members, as committee members, as uh, 
your people and leaders understand uh, uh, understanding this topic and uh, ensuring uh, ultimately combined success. Now, earlier on, you spoke about the importance of uh, CSO getting the support from top management. Now, in some companies, we may see a blended role of a CSO mm -hmm. and something else. For example, like it could be a C CSO is also a chief human resource uh, person, external affairs and growth officers. Um, talk to us about what the findings are revealed when CSOs concentrate exclusively on sustainability and don't have dual roles. Okay, so this is going to be very interesting, and uh, the findings uh, in this matter are very interesting. So, uh, the number one finding is that uh, CSOs who focus exclusively on sustainability matters make faster progress on sustainability versus ones who have wider remits. So, if you want speed of transformation, it is likelier if they are focusing on very clear, specific sustainability matters. However, we had talked about support from the CEOs and reporting lines. CSOs who are, the same report also reveals that CSOs who are exclusively focusing on sustainability are less likely to report into CEOs than if they had larger remits. And that's because sustainable growth transcends all functions of a business, uh, as we talked about. So if the CSOs were covering more than just sustainability uh, or, or specific sustainability topics, the likelihood of them reporting into CEOs goes up almost by two times. So therefore, it's a balance between uh, reporting lines and support versus speed. So support versus speed is the balance. And... Uh, it is an interesting uh, polarity to manage, but uh, but irrespective, uh, the, 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 the executive team needs to be behind it and the CSOs need to be skilled in understanding the most material topics and driving them. Yeah, Tane, uh, well said. Um, we, to wrap though, we, could you maybe just list for us what are some of the key attributes that a CSO should have or should possess? Yeah, in my professional experience, um, hiring for CSOs is one of the toughest um, uh, uh, across all roles. These are these are not uh, easy roles, and these are not easy roles because the demands, the pressures, and uh, uh, the requirements are difficult. The ecosystem is challenging, and CSOs are expected to perform at a very high level. Um, having said that, uh, what we've uncovered through our work. Uh, and through conversations with uh, senior leaders is that the top qualities for a uh, high-performing CSO are, number one, the ability to collaborate to drive change. So CSOs are driving change in an organization. Change is hard. They need to work across functions. Collaboration is the single biggest uh, determinant and quality of success. Number two is resilience. These are tough journeys. There are obstacles, there are challenges, there will be setbacks, uh, there will be uh, aspects that don't go the way one had imagined. How does one have the resilience to keep on the course and keep walking towards uh, a journey which is worth uh, going for? Uh, the third one is engagement and courage to manage ambiguity because the world is changing and we uh, know how rapidly uh, climate change itself is such a big challenge. The COP28 is uh, on at the moment and its uh, sustained efforts and commitments are being made. So how do you engage the wider organization and the external ecosystem? And lastly, I would say CSOs, the best CSOs I found are strategic uh, folks. They are not about execution only. They're strategic and they bring in systems thinking. They can connect the dots really well. So I would say collaboration, resilience, engagement, and uh, strategic thinking. Indeed. Thank you so much for summing that up for us uh, and for joining us today on Work It for all your insights. Uh, we were speaking to Tane Mishra, who is Head of Sustainability Asia Pacific at uh, Egon Zender Singapore. Again, Tane, thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you, Hui and Cheryl, and thank you for uh, doing your part to spread the word of sustainability within Singapore and, uh, and the world. Thank in you. Indeed, happy to do so.